as we get closer to the presidential election, uh, a lot of things are coming up regarding guns. Now, I'm going to be real honest. I don't trust either one. Both of them have openly said they like red flag laws. Um, one said, I like take guns first, then do due process. The other one said, we need red flag laws. So there you go. Now, with that being said, um, I just, I know humans, it doesn't matter what you say, uh, really doesn't matter what you say in the comments. I don't trust either one when it comes to our guns. Now, with that being said, there's also a lot of talk about owning guns that, you know, the candidates are saying, well, I own guns. So I wanted to take a moment and talk about the guns that both candidates actually own. Um, I think it's important to know. Uh, I think it definitely, you know, as we especially continue listening to a dialogue of taking our guns with promises of not taking our guns mixed in there. I think it's important that we know well, what kind of guns do you own? What kind of guns do they own? So let's start with Trump uh, in 2012 said that he has a New York concealed carry permit. Uh, they were very difficult to get back in the day. And, uh, but he had one and it says, and he was quoted as saying, I own a couple different guns, but I don't like to talk about it. Now later he communicated that he had a 45 Heckler and Coke handgun and a 38 special Smith and Wesson revolver. The model numbers he did not say. Uh, so what we know at this point, and, and he does have more guns, so we're going to get into that, but this is what he was quoted as saying he had. Harris, on the other hand, uh, said that I am a gun owner and, and I'm not going to, you know, take your guns. Um, but Harris, said she owns a gun and that she got it for personal safety when she was a prosecuting attorney. Um, there is no conversation about what kind other than in 2020, um, somebody who works for Harris said that she got a gun for personal safety and that it's a small handgun, small enough to fit in a tiny purse. So we know that. Uh, what handgun that is, uh, there's a lot of handguns out there that fit that description. Um, so this is what they say they own, but this isn't just what they own. They own a lot more guns, so let's get into that. In addition to the guns that Trump and Harris have claimed they have, what they both have, and this is very significant, is both of them have roughly 300 agents, Secret Service agents working for them, and we know what they are armed with. Uh, they are armed with Glock 9s, and this would be in the form of a Glock 17 and a Glock 19. Uh, so they both have roughly 300 Glock pistols in 9mm. Uh, used to be 357 SIG, but recently they switched. Uh, they both have um, an undisclosed number of Accuracy International bolt rifles uh, chambered in 762 by 51 or 308. They also have roughly 300 Knights Armament SR-25s, also in 7.62 NATO or 308. So let, let's pause there for a second, because what the big discussion is, is on taking what's been in quotes assault weapons. Um, and that would fit the description of, uh, of a uh, semi-automatic magazine fed rifle with a pistol grip is what they would say that, you know, that's, I don't think they know what they're talking about, but this is what they're talking about. Well, the Knight's Armament SR-25, that is what that is, but it's in 308. Like, think about that. So, you know, there's this talk about how, you know, 5.56 five, or a 223 could just like, you know, just mutilate a person, put a big giant hole in them, but it's only a 22 caliber bullet. This 308 is a much larger bullet. It's what you use to kill a moose or a deer, that kind of thing. Um, and they have it then in an AR format. Uh, so about 300 Glocks, undisclosed number of accurate, accuracy international block, uh, bolt rifles, Knight's Armament SR-25s, FNP-90s, so their sub-compact uh, machine guns or their, um, so their sub-machine guns. This would be that thing. The FNP-90 fires a 5.7 by 28, which is 
really kind of like a, a short rifle bullet. So it's an armor piercing bullet at times, um, you know, but the FNP 90, that is a bad to the bone submachine gun and getting it at 5.7 by 28 is kind of ridiculous. Um, and they have the jar standards. So this is what they really have. And I think it's important because it's easy to say, well, you know, and President Biden has these too. Um, and but what he'll say is he has a shotgun. So this is very significant as we continue to to watch people continue to talk about taking certain guns away from us and all you really need is a shotgun or all you need is a tiny gun to put in a bag or all you need is a revolver. This is what they really have. And I think it's important that we, you know, say this is what they have. Like this is not, I think a conversation that we can kind of go, well, you know, oh, well they have a tiny handgun. Like that's okay. So then take my AR. Like, no, like if you were to give me 300 Glocks, 300 SR-25s, several bolt-action rifles, uh, several FNP-90s, and some JAR standards. I would, I would, like, you can have my collection. Like, you can go and take my my little collection that I got. That's a better collection. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I got a couple old Swiss guns you can't have. But, but I would definitely give you my AR for all this stuff. That I do. Uh, you can have that one. Uh, but I got to get all this stuff because this is what you have. And I think that's the problem. You know, it's it's so easy for people who are surrounded by armed men and women to say, oh, well, you shouldn't have guns. You know, the Hollywood elite that's surrounded by ar armed men and women, you know, oh, we, we need to, you know, be free from assault rifles. Like it's, we just have to recognize that it's hypocrisy. So you can't really even entertain it at that point, if that makes sense. So. Uh, there you go. Any thoughts or in, insight on any of this stuff? I'm sorry if I insulted your candidate. Uh, I tried to insult both equally <laughs> as best I could. Uh, so I think I did bring some equality to the table there. Because um, I really don't. I don't trust either one. There's, there's not a candidate I trust to guard over my guns and my Second Amendment right at all. So, um, And the reason I brought up the red flag laws, I just want to address that in the beginning, is because I believe that's the most dangerous thing. Because it's easy to sit there and go, oh, you can have all these guns, but I'm going to take them from you without due process if I think you're dangerous. Uh, that's what Hitler did to the Jews. Uh, that's what we did to the American Indians. Um, that's what uh, China did to its citizens right before the Jap Japan came and just mutilated them all because they were helpless. Um, you know, this is what it looks like, you know, and if for some reason it was deemed that um, you know, Christians were dangerous, um, you know, or a, or a race or a people group of any kind was dangerous. Like this is how it plays out. Red flag laws are the most dangerous. And when both candidates say they like them, they're not a good situation for us to be in.